So recently I've been playing around more with wide angle lenses. And this is something that when I first started photography, kind of was a bit intimidating to me. There's just so much in frame. There's so much photo to think about. And I struggled compositionally. And so I avoided them going forward. I had a wide angle lens, but I just never used it because it just, it just wouldn't work for me. I just couldn't get the right look to my photo. And I stuck with longer lenses. And even now I prefer longer lenses. I prefer using a 135, a 70 to 200, something like that, because I find it so much easier to identify my subject in the shot, to actually make sure it's the focal point of the image, both obviously literally and in terms of drawing the viewer's eye. Whereas with a wide angle lens, it can be a little bit tricky. It can be a little bit difficult. So let's talk about one tip that can change your wide angle photography forever. It's you to a Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Two Tour Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. <laughs> oh, that was a big one. This week, like I said in the intro, we're talking wide angle photography and we're talking one composition technique that can really help improve your photos. Now, the biggest issue for me when it comes to taking wide angle photos is really identifying the subject in the frame and then finding a good composition to accompany or to enhance and amplify that subject within the photo. The reason for that is I always find myself with way too much foreground, too much sky, too much background, whatever it is, there's just too much of it. Now, one way you can overcome this is to just get closer to your subject and that works to an extent, but you need to be a little bit careful with wide angle lenses. If you get too close to the subject, you can start skewing the perspective and proportions and all that kind of stuff starts to get a little bit weird, which is not ideal, it's not what you want. So what can we do? Well, ultimately, one thing we can really think about is sectioning off the photo into at least three different parts. And that generally for me is gonna be the foreground, which will be the bottom third, the kind of subject area, which will probably be the middle third, and then the background or the sky, which is usually the top third. Now, I say thirds, they can differ a little bit. There's no hard and fast rule here. You know, if we have the subject much bigger in the frame, the background doesn't have to take up an entire third. The foreground doesn't have to take up an entire third. Or of course we could have more foreground, more subject, and almost no sky or no background. There's lots of different ways to play around with this. But if you're sectioning off the photo, you can think about them individually. Now the easiest one to think about first of all is the subject. Where's that gonna be? Where's it gonna be placed? How do you want to actually frame it up? Do you wanna have the rule of thirds? Do you wanna have it centered? Left, right, up, down a little bit? How big do you want to have it in the frame? How much of it do you want to include? And that will usually indicate how close you need to get to it. That's the easiest part to think about. Next up, we're probably gonna think about the foreground, right? Because for me at least, that can really be a difficult part of a wide angle photo. Now, when I start thinking about it like this, I start looking around if I'm doing landscape, if I'm doing portrait, whatever it might be, what is interesting around here? What would be an interesting thing to include as a visual element in the bottom third of my wide angle photo? Are there any leading lines I can use to actually point up towards my subject? Is there something interesting I can shoot through or shoot over to create this visual interest in the foreground? Let's look at this photo, for example. The kind of subject, I suppose, is probably more of the sunset and then we've got the tower and stuff like that, but the rocks pull all the way into the actual foreground here, which make for a nice interesting visual element that runs through the entire photo. If we look here, this is just the sea at sunset, but because we're shooting really low down to the sea, we get that texture all the way up into the foreground, which starts to go out of focus. Shooting past something or over something or through something, out of focus slightly can look really good. It can help frame up your subject. When it comes to an interesting foreground, it doesn't have to even be something specific that is interesting. It could be an interesting texture that you're shooting over. It could be an interesting color or light, or perhaps you want to have light on your subject and a bit more of a dark shadow in the foreground. Now this is usually easily accomplished by moving around. The great thing about wide angle lenses is you don't have to move much to change up what's in the frame, which is great. You want to be looking for a foreground that is either going to be interesting, add a visual element, enhance that composition, or actually just enhance the overall shot. A nice dark foreground can really add emphasis to your subject or your background. Now, of course, 
There's the background or the sky to think about as well. How much of it do you want to have in the shot? What do you want to include in the background? Now, generally with a wide angle lens, when things get further away, they get much, much smaller very quickly in the frame. So you're usually gonna be looking at things like the sky. And you can't really do much about what's in the sky, but you can control how much of the sky you include in the photo. Getting lower to the ground and aiming up will almost always include more of the sky. Getting a little bit higher up and aiming straight or even a little bit down will include less of the sky. That's something you wanna play by ear when you're actually looking at the shot. But if you're thinking about these as at least three different sections of the photo, foreground, middle, and then background, you can easily control how much of each one you want to include, move around until you find something interesting, or it overall enhances the composition within each section of the photo. This made it a lot easier for me to think about wide angle photography because all of a sudden it made me much more aware and conscious about what I was including and what I wasn't including in the photo. Sometimes it's as simple as taking a few steps to your left or your right or forward or back. Sometimes it is about finding a different spot entirely. And sometimes it might even be as simple as actually turning the camera to kind of the portrait orientation rather than landscape. It all depends on what you're shooting, where you are, what the conditions are like, and what's around you. But there's one thing that's for sure. Thinking about the photo, putting more thought into each section, will almost always make for a better end result. Just the act of consciously making some decisions like that will almost always improve your work. Now that's just one tip that I have found extremely helpful in my time with wide angle lenses, but I'd love to hear if you have any other tips for wide angle photography. Pop them down in the comments. You guys have always got great insight for this kind of stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We've got more content all the time, tutorials every week, reviews, just generally good times. Now there's a link down in the description so you can go and check out all the lenses and cameras and stuff like that that we used for these photos, including the new Sony 20 to 70 F4 G lens, oh, oh, which is actually really, really lovely. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.